Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. There's Hot Cross Bun Recipe because it's almost Easter and there they are. Oh yes. Almost Easter and I want to make some hot cross buns. Wouldn't have been able to do this if it wasn't for my wonderful neighbour Rob. So in the comments below I say thanks Rob because he got me some yeast. Somehow he managed to find that. I wonder if he had to fight for it but what a ledge. Anyway I'm going to crack on with these. I hope you love this. All right let's make some sticky buns shall we. Milk and I've used 50-50 milk and water. They'll rise more quickly. Milk to warm up to tepid, like blood temperature. While that's doing that very slowly, sift the flour, zest in the lemon zest, sorry, it's grate in the lemon zest into the flour. That's the salt and the spices, that's mixed spice and cinnamon. Obviously the full recipe is in the description. Just test the milk again before you put the yeast in. If it's hot, you're gonna kill the yeast. So it wasn't hot, it was just warm, that's lovely. And the sugar, the yeast will enjoy that sugar, it help it, gives it something to feed on. 10 minutes later, you can see there, a little bit of frothy. We know the yeast is alive, it's activated. So whack the yeast and then the melted butter in. Stir just for a minute and then we go, oh yeah, we need to put the egg as well. Don't forget the egg. It's just there, don't forget the egg. There you go, you remembered. Now you're gonna have a very, very sticky, messy dough. It's gonna be hard to work with, but the best breads are, you know, usually this way to take a minute to try to get all the bits out of the bowl. And what I should have done was also have my bench scraper ready. Obviously, if you have a stand mixer that works better than mine with a dough hook, let this do all this work for you. But you probably will need to add more flour anyway. Just keep cleaning your hands up and just add flour as and when you need it. Try to work with this dough when it's sticky, picking it up, slapping it down. The more you work it, it will start coming together, but yeah, you, you are gonna need that flour, and it's ideal to put a bit on your hands and just give them a bit of a clean up. So also, just a bit, the brief bit of history, I think everybody knows, hot cross buns, synonymous with Easter, usually had Good Friday, the cross on the top, signifies the crucifix. And apparently the spices in there signify the uh, spices that were used to embalm uh, Jesus, his burial, which is a bit grim. I didn't know that. There we go. So the technique, pick it up, slap it down, pick it up, slap it down, roll it out. We're getting there now, it, it, we're, but it's still sticky. So as and when, just a little bit of flour, that's fine. And these are also basically enjoyed pretty much around the Anglosphere. So everywhere around the world where they speak English, these would be popular. You're welcome, world. All right, definitely getting there now. But we haven't put the fruit in yet, so we are gonna need to get that in. So once I'm happy with the dough, once it's sort of, it's easy to work with, it's it's gonna be softer than a normal regular bread, bread ugh, get your teeth in, bread dough, because it's all enriched and everything. But we're gonna be ready for that fruit. So that's, what I wanna do is roll it out into a flat disc, like so. And we're gonna pie up the fruit in the middle and it's loads of fruit, but get it all in. It's right, it's the right amount. Tuck the edges over like that. I love this technique, it's really nice. And then just carry on working this. And again, obviously you could use your mixer for this, make life a lot easier. And work it until you think you've got the fruit pretty well incorporated. I think we're about there. It's slightly tacky, but it's not sticky anymore. And that is the sign of hopefully a tremendous dough. So it's time to let this thing prove after you've slapped it. Bit of oil in a bowl, pop your dough in, give it a toss around so it's all coated, that way it won't get dry and it's proving, won't stop it from proving. About an hour and a half later I had to tip the plate over because it's raising up above where the plate was. Turn it out, that looked nice, very satisfying. Now you've got to punch that air out we're going to form it back into a shape that's going to be easy for us to divide into 12 pieces. So depending on how pedantic you want to be, you could weigh that 
on your scales and then work out with your calculator exactly how much you need for 12. This is a recipe for 12 buns. And do it that way, but I, just, I can't be asked for that. So I just by eye, get it in half, then get those halves into sort of a nice even shape and get them in half. So if you're keeping up with the maths, we should have now four quarters. And each one of them will beat into three. So again, you just want to make that into a shape. You think, okay, by eye, you get a good idea of exactly what a third would be. But don't worry, if you get, when you've done them all, if some are a bit smaller than others, just tear off a bit from one of the bigger ones and add it to one of the little ones. And that's it. It's pretty simple, really. As long as they're almost the same, this is going to work out just lovely. And there I am, yeah, just adjusting that one. That one's a bit small. There we go. You're welcome. Roll them. Here we go. So this is the technique. Bit of pressure downwards and roll it around and it should sort of pull the bottom in tight to form a ball. It's easier to do it than to theorise it. So just by doing it, you'll, you'll pick it up. And there's another one done. And the other technique is, I'm about to show you here, is sort of get your hands underneath it and you'll sort of, you can see me sort of trying to turn the bottom in and it's a bit small to do that for me, so then give up and go back to the other technique. But there you go. Twelve beautifully formed buns. I'm using two trays, and I'm not putting them too far apart. Yes, they're not touching, but they're not so far apart, because I actually, as they prove and cook, I want them to touch. And we get this delightful thing called a kissing crust, which is just lovely. So we're going to cover them whilst they prove couple of sheets of cling film, slightly overlapping, a little bit of grease, a little bit of oil on there, and drape. Do not tuck this in, keep it nice and loose. In fact, pick up it, look at the corners, pick it up so it's like a tent. That way they can prove upwards and outwards beautifully. And do the other tray, obviously. Now we're gonna make the paste for the cross on the top. And it's just flour and water. That was plain flour, or all-purpose flour, and just regular tap water, it doesn't matter and add a bit, and it's a bit thick still, so add a bit more. Probably a couple of tablespoons were required. So struggling with the spoon really, it's a bit lumpy, so I'm gonna discard the spoon and get a whisk in there. And do this while they're proving the buns, because you'll find that the flour will continue to absorb water while it's resting, so you may find that that batter you've got there, that paste, gets a bit thicker, so you might need to adjust it with a splash of water. As long as it will hold its shape just on top of the buns, that's what you're after. They have doubled in size. I am very happy. This is looking extremely promising. So in order to form these crosses, I'm going to pipe these. So if you have piping bags, that's great. If you don't, get a freezer bag. I'm sure you've got one of them. Pour it into there. I just use the glass there to help me do that. And just nip off a little bit of the corner. Not too wide. Maybe half a centimetre and just drag it all the way along. I'm going to show you a better angle there because you can't see it very well there. Here we go. So down the side, let it gather in the middle in between them. There you go, you can see the technique. This is how it's done. Thank you, Paul Hollywood and Mary Berry for showing me this technique. Yep, yeah, very happy, very happy indeed. Quickly do the others. You've got your oven preheated, 200 degrees centigrade. If you've got a fan oven, that's 390 approximately Fahrenheit. Uh, sorry about my bum. Uh, it's about 20 minutes. I, I may have gone to 20, 22, 23 minutes. I turned them halfway through. I tapped the bottom and they were ready. And that is going on top. That beautiful stuff is apricot jam. You could just use some syrup if you like. But apricot jam with a splash of water. I warmed it up in the microwave just so I could brush it on top and it transforms them from something very nice into something unbelievably seductive. Look at them. Look at my buns. And that's the kissing crust. That's worth waiting for, isn't it? Look at that. How gorgeous is that? Beautiful. And thank you very much, Rob, next door for the yeast. And uh, don't worry, I rewarded them with half a, half a dozen? Yeah, half a dozen of these. Because I'm on a diet. I've only had one. I know, it's a real shame. And how do I enjoy them? Well, if they're fresh like this, I don't think you need them toasted. Just a nice big smearing of butter. But yeah, once they're a couple of days, I'll whack them in the toaster. 
Anyway, going to send back over to me. Okay, hot cross buns. Um, looking great. I've got to say, they, they look good, but they look homemade as well, which is, you want that. Um, still slightly warm. Extremely happy with those um, so yeah if you fancy having a go hot cross buns if you can find something as rare and exotic as yeast and thank you very much for watching this episode of Uncle Max Cooker Lessons I hope you like it enough to give it a go and I'll see you soon bye